Contestant number four, Mark Lockery. The candle, the candle, Mark Lockery. If somebody told you that you were as bright as a candle, would that be a compliment? Maybe if you were in the 1400s. But nowadays, it just means you're not that smart. <laughs> Madam Contest Master, members and guests, when I was a kid, I hated school and I hated reading. The only thing I wanted to do was play video games. And the only game that was out back then was Pong. <laughs> and we didn't own it because we weren't one percenters. We had to go out of the house for our entertainment. And the one place in the neighborhood that every kid flocked to was Chuck E. Cheese's. That's right, the place whose mascot was a six-foot rat. So depending on how old you were, he was either really cool or he showed up in your dreams and tried to kill you. But for this seven-year-old, Chuck E. Cheese was cool. Now, I had never been there, but my friend Scott had been there, and he said it was awesome. He once told me, Mark, if you go to Chuck E. Cheese, you are guaranteed pizza prizes and pandemonium. Which, coincidentally enough, were the only three things in life that mattered to seven-year-old boys. Because seven-year-old girls had cooties. I wanted to go to Chuck E. Cheese so bad that my parents even wrote it on my index card. But we didn't have a computer in our house. So our parents kept index cards on all the kids. And on the card, they would have the kid's name, their strengths and their weaknesses, how smart or intelligent they were, and all of the toys and games that they ever said they wanted. My parents took the time to write down every single toy and game I ever said I wanted growing up. They never actually bought any of them for me, but they wrote them on the index card so they would have that information if they ever wanted to use it against me later on in life. <laughs> One day, Mom told Dad to take me to the dentist. Now, Dad knew I would never go to the dentist willingly. I had never been there, but my friend Scott had, and he said it was terrible. So my dad reached in his pocket, found my index card, he saw on there that I had short-term memory problems. I wanted to go to Chuck E. Cheese, and I was as bright as a candle. So he came up to me and he said, Mark, do you want to go to the dentist? And I said, no. And then he said, Mark, do you want to go to the dentist? And I said, no. And then he waited five seconds, and then he said, Mark, do you want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, boy? And I said, yeah. I was so excited, I ran down and jumped in the front seat of my dad's car. I was like one of those apartment dogs that thinks she's going to poop at the fancy dog park. But in reality, he's not going to the dog park. He's going to the vet. He just doesn't know it because his owner didn't tell him. That was just like me. I wasn't going to Chuck E. Cheese. I was going to the dentist. But I didn't know it because my owner didn't tell me. So apparently we're in the waiting room outside of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and I'm looking around at all the other kids in there, and none of them are happy. <laughs> this kid over here is depressed, and this girl's crying. And I look around and I see pictures of smiling faces and teeth on the wall. And it was as if a light went off over my head. Bunch of excited kids at Chuck E. Cheese? I was the only excited kid at Chuck E. Cheese! Man! Oh, and when that lady called my name saying I could go to the back, I jumped out of my seat. I was so happy. I wanted to share my enthusiasm. So I went over and I danced in front of that girl who was crying because she had cooties. Chuck E. Cheese! Yeah! I even went over to the boy who was depressed and I danced in front of him. Chuck E. Cheese! Years. Oh, 
All I had to do was get through that door, and I knew every dream and fantasy I had was going to come true. So I hit that door, I run it, and by the time I burst through those doors, I was in full theme song mode. I was like, Chucky! Jesus, what is this? <laughs> this place was nothing like my friend Scott had described it. I was so mad, I didn't even speak to my dad the whole way home. Remember, on the way there, I was like the dog going to the dog park, drooling with anticipation. <laughs> on the way back, I was like the dog coming home from the vet. Uh, still drooling, but not from anticipation at this point. <laughs> when I got home, my friend Scott came over to compare notes. Contest champion, Ronald Melvin! Oh! 